Chemical agents may be delivered in many forms. Gas, liquid, or aerosol. They can be delivered by mines, artillery, rockets, bombs, or aircraft spray. Favorable wind and terrain features will aid in the spread of the agents, making them a hazard for troops some distance away from the initial attack area. To prevent casualties among our troops, you must quickly identify the possible hazard and warn units within the hazard area. In this presentation, you will be shown the procedures used to determine the downwind hazard areas. the chemical downwind hazard area, the NBC Center NCO must have detailed meteorological information like that given in the chemical downwind message and an NBC 1 or 2 chemical report. The NBC Center has just received the chemical downwind message for the next six hour period. Line whiskey of this message contains coded weather information which is valid for the next two hours. Weather information for line x-ray is valid for the two hours following line whiskey and information from Line Yankee is valid for the final two hours of the six-hour period. From Line X-ray, 120 is the wind direction. 015 is the wind speed. In this instance, it is 15 kilometers per hour. Following the wind speed is the code for atmospheric stability. From graphic training aid GTA 3-6-3, the NCO knows that the number two represents unstable atmospheric conditions. Air stability is a very important factor in predicting a chemical downwind hazard, since the more stable the air conditions, the greater the hazard area will be. The eighth and ninth digits on the chemical downwind message give the current air temperature, in this case 18 degrees Celsius. The tenth digit gives the humidity reading. The number five represents a humidity level between 50 and 59 percent. The eleventh digit in the chemical downwind message is coded information for significant weather phenomena. The six indicates rain. The last digit in the CDM is coded information for cloud cover. In this code, the two indicates the sky is more than half covered by clouds. The NBC Center has just received an NBC One chemical report. The observer's position is reported as Lima Bravo 200300. The attack started at 0945 Zulu time and ended at 0950 Zulu time. The observer gave the location of the area attacked as Lima Bravo 200300 and reported the attack as being ground bursting artillery with unknown agent. Total number of munitions was reported as 20 rounds. For hazard prediction, all agents are classified as either air contaminating agents, type A, or ground contaminating agents, type B. Air contaminating agents are normally dispersed as an aerosol or vapor cloud. In ground bursting munitions such as artillery shells and multiple rocket launchers. A non-persistent nerve agent employed upwind of the target is an example of this type of attack. All attacks are assumed to be type A unless there is unmistakable evidence of ground contamination. Ground contaminating agents are normally expected to be dispersed in liquid form to contaminate surfaces. They may be dispersed by aircraft spray tanks, air bursting artillery shells, rockets, missiles, and mines. Persistent nerve and mustard agents are examples of this type of attack. There are six cases which must be considered when predicting the downwind hazard area, depending upon the type of contamination and atmospheric conditions. From the NBC-1 chemical report, the NCO knows that the attack was ground bursting munitions from artillery fire. This indicates an air contaminating agent or type A attack. 
Based on the time of attack, which occurred at 0945, and which corresponds to the two-hour period in line X-ray of the chemical downwind message, he also knows that the wind speed at 015 is greater than 10 kilometers per hour. This means that he will use the procedures for type A, case B, to calculate the downwind hazard area. If the type of contamination is unknown, we always assume type A, air contaminating attack, and the prediction is based upon wind speed, air stability, and means of delivery. When the wind speed is 10 kilometers or less, the hazard area is in the shape of a circle. And when the wind speed is greater than 10 kilometers, the hazard area is in the shape of a fan. Once the type of contamination becomes known, the hazard prediction area will be changed if needed and a new NBC-3 sent out. The NCO first plots the attack location from the NBC-1 chemical report. From the attack location, he draws a line to grid north for reference. Using a compass, he draws a one kilometer radius circle around the center of the attack location. The next step is to obtain the downwind direction and wind speed from a current chemical downwind message. The downwind direction was reported as 120 and the wind speed as 15 kilometers per hour. The NCO must draw a line from the attack center to represent the downwind direction. Also from the chemical downwind message, the NCO determined earlier that the air was reported as being unstable. He must now determine the maximum downwind distance for the predicted chemical hazard area from the maximum downwind distance table. The attack was ground bursting artillery munitions and the air is unstable. Using the chart, the NCO determines that the distance from the center of the attack area along the downwind axis will be 10 kilometers. He plots the maximum downwind distance of 10 kilometers then draws a line perpendicular to the downwind direction. He then extends the downwind direction line upwind two kilometers from the attack center and draws two lines that just touch the attack area circle and extends them until they intersect the maximum downwind distance line. The area inside the fan is the predicted downwind hazard area. To make up the NBC-3 chemical report, the NBC Center NCO chooses five points to locate the hazard area. These points include one point on the attack area circle directly behind the center of the attack, the two points tangent to the circle, and the two points where the tangent lines intersect the maximum downwind distance line. The coordinates for these five points are sent as line item Papa Alpha in the NBC-3 chemical report. Line Yankee of the NBC-3 chemical report gives the downwind direction of the hazard in degrees or mils, and the wind speed, in this case, 15 kilometers per hour. Line Zulu Alpha gives significant weather information gained by local observation. The number codes for Zulu Alpha are the same as those used in the CDM. If the conditions predicted by the CDM are in error due to local weather, the Zulu Alpha will be changed to reflect the codes for those local conditions. The NBC-3 chemical report is sent to all units and installations which are in the predicted hazard area. The procedures which you have just been shown result in a fan-shaped hazard area prediction. Now let's follow the procedures for a ground contaminating agent with a wind speed less than 10 kilometers per hour. We've had an attack in the 1st Brigade sector. They're using air burst munitions. Agent unknown, here are the coordinates. Four cases must be considered when plotting the downwind hazard area for type B attack. The first three cases are for wind speeds greater than 10 kilometers per hour. The fourth case is for wind speeds less than or equal to 10 kilometers per hour. The time of attack was 10-15 hours. This is within the time frame for Line Yankee of the CDM, which is valid from 1,000 to 1,200 hours. From Line Yankee of the chemical downwind message, the NCO knows that the wind speed is 5 kilometers per hour, so he must follow the procedures for type B, case D. 
In all cases, the maximum downwind distance is 10 kilometers. Because of this, the air stability category is not considered. For ground contaminating agents, the governing factor is the size of the attack area. For ground contaminating agents, the size of the attack area can be determined by comparing the means of delivery of the agent. For instance, when the agent is delivered by artillery, bomblets, or mortars, the attack area would be one kilometer in size. Agents delivered by multiple rocket launchers, missiles, bombs, or unknown munitions can produce an attack area up to two kilometers in radius. Agents delivered by spray attack or from a large-scale artillery attack by several battalions could result in an attack area extending more than two kilometers in a straight line. For example, the distance between the start and stop points for a spray attack or the distance across a front by the large-scale artillery attack. From the NBC-1, we know the means of delivery was artillery. And from the chart, we can see that the attack area radius of one kilometer applies in case D, and that the downwind hazard area will be a 10 kilometer circle. The chemical downwind hazard prediction for this type of attack is relatively simple. The NBC Center NCO plots the attack location, then draws two circles, one with a one kilometer radius and one with a 10 kilometer radius around the attack area center. The NBC-3 chemical report includes the strike serial number, the date and time the attack started, the location of the area attacked, the type of agent and the height of burst, the predicted hazard area, the expected duration of the hazard, any significant weather information, and the size of the attack area. This is Alpha 6-3, NBC-3, Kim follows, line Alpha, Charlie. Two, zero, zero, one. Line Delta. In this presentation, you have been shown the procedures used to predict a chemical downwind hazard area. The information in the chemical downwind message, an analysis of the terrain, and the hazard prediction plot more effectively advises commanders for operations on the air-land battlefield. As a member of an NBC center, you must be thoroughly familiar with these procedures. When an attack of this type occurs, time will mean lives saved or lost. You must be able to quickly and effectively evaluate the strike data reported to you, then predict the chemical downwind hazard area as accurately as possible from the data received.